Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Axis and Allies 1942 Online, a newly developed game by Beamdog Studios, which allows you to play through the board game Axis and Allies, the 1942 version, uh, in a digital version. It's a new digital uh, adaptation of this game. Uh, I played it with Tortuga and uh, John uh, Marciniak, the strategy wargamer, uh, on my channel a couple of days back. Uh, but this is actually part three of our look at the game. Uh, we did a first look game against the AI. We did a second part of that same campaign. In today's episode, we will be continuing our campaign playing against the AI. So I know some of you said you weren't a huge fan of the gameplay uh, where I was playing online and it was just kind of us shooting the breeze and having a good time, uh, but not actually a whole lot of gameplay commentary. This video is gameplay commentary, basically exclusive. It was taken from a live stream, so there's a little bit of chat with the, uh, with the chat. Uh, but in general, the bulk of this is me just playing through the game and talking about it, and this is part three of our... Uh, game uh, against the access or against the allies playing as the access. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump back in, and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so just as a refresher, uh, we're returning. This is round three of our Axis and Allies series against the AI, not to be confused with the, uh, I thought, enjoyable and humorous, but some people had some negative reactions to uh, to my online uh, series with, uh, X, with uh, Tortu I keep saying X-Tergy, with Tortuga and Jean Marciniak, the strategy wargamer, who we all do single malt strategy together. Uh, at round three, the Germans have uh, pushed deep into the Middle East and nearly are linking up with the German forces in the Caucasus and Russia. Uh, however, the British have landed reinforcements in Africa and are threatening the German rear. Uh, the Germans should be able to pull the tanks back out to Egypt prior to any uh, failure there. However, uh, the Americans have landed in Morocco, and there's almost nothing to stop them from moving toward Libya. The Germans are overstretched and undersupplied in uh, North Africa. We'll probably need to buy a transport or something like that and place it off the coast of Italy. Uh, meanwhile, in the European theater, uh, France and northwestern Europe have largely been stripped of the majority of their forces. The British Royal Navy has more or less been destroyed. They do have a cruiser and two destroyers here now, uh, so they, they could potentially sweep the seas clear of our, of our submarines there. But it's unlikely they'd be able to mount an amphibious invasion for at least two turns there, which gives us some time to reduce the Russians. Speaking of the Russians, we have successfully driven them back. We have taken uh, the Leningrad, Karelia, a hex. We've nearly taken Archangel, although a heroic American fighter unit there withstood our last attack. And they now have 15 infantry units in Moscow. They could certainly overwhelm and retake Western Russia next turn if they would like, uh, but that would potentially weaken Russia itself. Uh, to avoid to allow a counterattack from the Caucasus, which has been taken by the Germans. The Russian forces are basically all infantry, but that's good on the defensive, so it's unlikely we're going to take Russia in the next few turns or anything like that. Meanwhile, in the uh, Asian theater, the Japanese have successfully taken a chunk of China. We just lost Sichuan to an American counterattack there. We've redeployed a bunch of our forces here to deal with the British forces in India. They have quite a few units there in India. I'm debating making a play for them. We could attack with uh, two twos uh, with the artillery and infantry, uh, and then another two with the infantry. So we could attack with three twos, one three, sorry, four threes and two twos and one, oh my god, three twos, uh, Three twos, four threes could attack against five twos, uh, three fours, and an anti-aircraft. That would certainly give the advantage to the British, but who knows? Maybe we could be successful there. Meanwhile, in the Pacific, the American fleet has been badly beaten up, but because the Americans make a lot of money, they do have reinforcements. They've got a, a couple of units here in uh, South America, and then they've got a battleship unit here off the West Coast. They've got a battleship unit here approaching Japan, along with a transport and a cruiser, although there's no troops on the transport. So... We've had some successes against the Americans thus far in the Pacific Theater, uh, but uh, that success may be fleeting. We'll see. Uh, we haven't taken any land. We haven't taken Australia or anything like that uh, in the Pacific Theater. And it is Japan's turn right now, actually. So um, with that being said, what are we going to do with our money? We've got 34 MPPs. Um, I think the key for Japan, uh, we probably want to actually place a factory on the... Uh, continent of um, Asia. The question is what we, where we want to place it. I think we'd place it in um, Manchuria because it has level 3 uh, industry so that way we don't have to transport troops across all the time. That's slow and inefficient. So that'll be the bulk of our expenditures this turn. I also think we probably want to buy a new cruiser. Uh, that only leaves us with 7 MPP and maybe we'll want another trance. No. We'll actually go with 
um, a tank unit here. So we're going to go with one armored unit, one uh, industry unit, and one naval unit. Um, Japan really doesn't make a lot of money. All right, so combat moves. I think the first thing we need to do is try and take out this American battleship. Uh, can these aircraft make it up there? Yes, they can. Okay, so that's going to make things a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and fly these aircraft up here. We've got two fighter units that are going to be flying there. Meanwhile, this battleship is going to sail up north here to deal with this American battleship off the American coast. We'll sail a destroyer up that way as well. The Americans actually don't have any aircraft. Oh, they do have a fighter unit there, but I'm not too worried about one fighter unit here. We'll even send our aircraft carrier up here. That way it can act kind of as a bullet sponge and, and take damage um, if the enemy succeeds to do damage to us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move a battle or a, a bomber unit from Wake Island here to deal with the American fleet. We're going to move a destroyer. We're going to move a cruiser, and we're going to move two aircraft carriers here. Again, they're going to act as bullet sponges, expensive bullet sponges, but bullet sponges nonetheless. This battleship here will move up that way as well as this cruiser and this carrier. So we're really going to try and knock out the American fleet here off the Japanese coast. Um, any other attack uh, movements this turn? We need to reinforce China, so we're going to move... Fuck. Maybe... I hate the idea of moving this armor here. Oh, I can't even move there. Close. So let's do this. I don't think it's a wise idea to attack India because the British have too many fighters there. But I do think what we'll do is we'll attack Szechuan with one infantry, and then we're going to hit it with two fighter units that then we'll move back to Burma and they'll land there. I think they can do that. Um, and then we can have one land unit here at NY and one land unit here at Szechuan. We'll take the damage to the fighter if we have to. Uh, and then that should help us there. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and attack Russia with three infantry units through Manchuria and see if we can put a little bit of pressure on the Russians to keep some of these infantry here in the east also. So I think that probably almost does it for the Japanese turn. I've got two units and yeah, but I can't I don't think I can really do anything else with any of the other troops that we have. All of our air units are deployed. So that's going to do it for the combat phase. Okay, so we'll go to the next phase. Let's do the battle off the American West Coast first. Sea Zone 56, your Navy is attacking. Naval combat. All right, so we've got a carrier versus... Oh, this is a cruiser. It's not a battleship. Ha! Ha! The carrier with a level one knocked the American out. And the American missed, so no damage to our force there. Uh, obliterated the American cruiser off the west coast. Good result for us there. 12 IPCs destroyed. Um, meanwhile, we've got this big battle here in Sea Zone 56 between the west coast and the Americas. Our Navy is attacking. I think there is an American battleship here. There is, as well as a destroyer and a transport. The transport doesn't do anything. We have three carriers attacking first. Uh, no ones there for them. Destroyer rolling, and it rolls a three. Damn it, still no hits. What about our four threes? Two cruisers and two aircraft. We get one hit there against the battleship. And now we have two fours that get to roll. Hopefully we get two hits there. Nice. All right, so we just destroyed the enemy fleet because the transport can't do anything. It's just a matter of whether their defense gets any hits. And they do. So they get a hit there with their um, destroyer. I'll take a hit on one of the carriers. I've got three of them. Please miss battleship. No, it didn't miss. And we'll take a hit on our battleship because our battleship can repair. So we lose one ship here. The battleship loses one of its hit points, but it still has one remaining. And that ends the battle. So we lose 14 IPCs. The enemy loses 35. Definitely a victory for us there. The American Navy is almost all but destroyed. They've got that one unit here off the coast of South America, but they don't have any actual troops there, so they can't transport anything. And then they've got a battleship and a cruiser off the East Coast. So they've got a fair amount in the Atlantic, just not a whole lot in the Pacific. Meanwhile, let's go ahead with the attack in southern China at Sichuan. Our two fighters and one infantry here moving up against one American infantry unit uh, in defense. Again, the hope is that the American misses and that uh, our fighters can uh, do the damage here to destroy it. We just need one three or better. We got it. So the Americans defeated. I will take the loss to the fighter if they hit, but they don't. And so that's a success there.
All right, so three more American IPCs lost. Szechuan falls to the Japanese. And now we've got three ground units attacking at Burusita SSR here in northern uh, China or southern Russia, southeastern Russia uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the Siberia area. Nice. All right, so we immediately took out one of the Red Army units. They're going to roll a counterattack, and they're going to miss. So rolling like a god, as uh, someone said in one of my previous videos, another victory for the Japanese forces. So that was a good turn. Japan lost 14 IPCs. The Russians lost 3. The Americans lost 50. So that was 53 versus 14. Good result for us. Now, I don't know why it brought me back to Europe, because we're not doing anything there. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, do our non-combatant moves. So with Manchuria, uh, we successfully won a battle there. The Soviets probably aren't going to want to counterattack out of Yakut. They have four infantry units there. But they attack at one, and again, we've got three units there that defend at two. So that's a pretty good setup for us there. Um, again, probably not going to attack at a Sinkang or Kazan. We do need to land our fighters here. These two fighters will both land in Burma because they can, and that should help prevent a, uh, a British um, offensive out of India. Meanwhile, to strengthen our own forces here... Oh, these, this, where's this fighter going to land? Move this fighter out of the Manila region as well. So now we'll have an extra fighter here defending out of Burma if necessary. All right, so we're going to move him. And we're going to load up that artillery. And we'll unload it here. So now we're going to have two artillery in Burma. Uh, we want to get some more infantry there too. So we'll probably bring that transport down to the East Indies in the next turn or so to pull one of our infantry units out of there. Actually, we could probably move this unit out of uh, Malaya to uh, French Indochina and then move into Burma. So then we could have two infantry units with two artillery units attacking with an ar a uh, tank unit as well and some three, four fighters. So the British are really going to need to reinforce, continue to reinforce India if they want to be able to hold it. Uh, meanwhile, this uh, naval unit here, let's prepare for a final attack in the American Navy if we can. Can any of these guys still move? Doesn't look like it. This bomber needs to land. We'll land him in. Uh, where do I want to land this bomber unit? Probably keep the bomber unit in play for the Pacific Theater, so we'll land him at Wake Island. These carriers or these uh, fighters can stay with the carriers there. And so I don't think there's a lot of other non-combatant moves that I'd be able to make at the moment. All of these naval units already moved. And the Japanese Navy reigns supreme at the moment. And I don't have any transports to move these troops out of t Japan. So that's going to do it for that turn. I really need, actually, I probably should have invested in a transport in any event. We just bought a new factory. That factory should go to Manchuria, I think. I mean, the Dutch East Indies and Manila and, and whatever have more points, but they're all too isolated like they're not on the continent which is the entire purpose of this but we can't move these units into the new production yet so we'll have to suffice for that for the time being meanwhile it's now the american turn the japanese gained two territories two national production uh, and uh, had some su successful battles so let's see what the americans do presumably they're going to attack in um, north africa trying to see what all their Whoa, their combat moves are already done? I didn't even see what they did. So mobilization, what are they going to place? More transports on the East Coast? They're really doing the Germany first strategy, I guess. Now we're into the Soviet turn here. The Soviets are moving some troops to Archangel. Where? What is all going on? I can't say. Hey. They didn't counterattack at all? All right, let's see here. So no counterattacks by the Soviets in Russia. They did just shift some troops around. They've got 16 infantry and 3 artillery at Moscow. They moved 5 infantry north to Archangel. I'm wondering if it makes sense. I don't think yet. I don't have enough. I need to more, move more troops forward to be able to attack Moscow next turn. I could attack with 4 infantry. With 5 infantry. And then we'd have... 
a fair amount. Why is this a negative one here? Oh, we must have been strat bombed. Um, I mean, I could attack with a fair amount of strength, but not enough to likely have success. I need to move more of these troops east. So probably not this turn. Meanwhile, North Africa, the Americans advanced one more unit. They, did they move their arm tank unit? Or did they lose it? Looks like they lost their armored unit in an attack. So that's good for us. All right, so what do we need to do? Um, we need to repair. I guess we have to spend some... How much do we spend? One point to repair our German industry. Uh, meanwhile, at sea, let's build two transports. We'll build a fighter. Then we're going to build some tanks. And then some artillery. Mm, another artillery. Okay. So we're going to build two artillery, one infantry, two tanks, two transports, and a fighter. In terms of our combat phase, I don't want to counterattack anything, I don't think. I guess we could go for... Um, Anglo-Egyptian Sudan and try and knock out that, that British unit there, but I'd prefer not to do that, so we won't do that. Oh, no! Don't do that. Don't be dumb. All right, so... Meanwhile, I'd rather go for a naval attack on this American battleship if we could. So we're going to attack this American battleship out in the open sea. Actually, maybe we don't want to do that. Do we want to continue trying to destroy the British Navy here off the British coast? Then we can use our bombers and support. All right, so we'll use our air units and support there. Meanwhile, I want to move... I don't I don't want to give them a free turn. So I think what we'll do is we'll move some units here to Kazan. I mean, we could roll through Persia and move toward Kazan SSR this way. The thing is, the Soviets are going to be able to counterattack next turn if they really, really want to. So it kind of comes down to where we want to move our units. But I could take Persia and then Kazan. It would abandon Egypt to the British. But I'm going to be reinforcing from the continent anyway, so let's do that. We're going to roll through Persia, move toward Kazan. So that should ensure a successful attack there. And those are probably the only German attacks we're going to make this turn. I mean, we... Mm. These guys can't reach. We could make for an armored spearhead here. That would just be bad odds. to so roll out of the Caucasus toward Archangel. By the way, I forgot I had factories in the Caucasus, so we can put our new units there. Actually, why don't, because of that, because I can put my new units in the Caucasus, I'm actually going to attack Archangel. Because even if the enemy counterattacks and takes West Russia, they're going to have to pull a bunch of troops out. And I'm actually going to move non-combatant forces forward too to reinforce West, reinforce West Russia. They might try and retake. No, we're going to place units in the Caucasus, so that'll be safe. So we should be able to take Kazar, SSR, and hopefully Archangel as well. And start to isolate and maybe even surround Moscow. So I think that's our combat phase. 
Let's go ahead and actually fight the battles out. So first things first. First things first, let's buckle those belts. Um, let's go with a naval attack here against the British. Yep, Axis and Allies is 19.99 on Steam right now. All right, so, ooh, nice. Oh, we got two hits. Good job, submarines. Two hits, enemy destroyers are going down, down. All right, so let's hopefully we can get one more hit to knock out the cruiser here and just destroy him in one round. No, we missed. All right, so the two destroyers are going to roll. They're going to hit one. We'll lose the sub. And then the cruiser will roll also. And he also gets a hit. That's pretty lame. You can knock out our sub, I guess. All right, so two British destroyers uh, gone. Now we can do a surprise attack. So the destroyer prevented the surprise attack. But now we do a surprise attack with the re remaining sub. And nice, it rolls a one also. So there goes the British cruiser. So two German submarines lost. Two uh, British destroyers and a British cruiser lost. Battle favors us pretty heavily in terms of IPCs. Good result there. All right, so let's go ahead and fight the battle here at Kazan SSR here in the south of Russia. All right, so we're going to roll two, nothing. What about our tank? Nice. All right, so the British infantry in southern Russia dies and does nothing. Very good result for us there. So another victory there. Three more British, I, or I guess they're Soviet, but really British IPCs here. The Germans and the Japanese are almost linking up in China, by the way. And then we've got the attack here in Archangel. The Americans have pulled their fighter unit out of here, so I think they pulled their fighter unit out of here. So hopefully this should be a victory. There's five Soviet infantry units here. We have five. Uh, I mean, we do have the... Oh, nice! Well, when we, get a, when we get a one from our infantry, that helps. But we've got five threes versus their five twos. All right, so we got two more hits. So they're going to lose three. They get five counterattacks. They only get one hit, so we'll take the hit on the infantry, which is the guy who was supposed to die anyway. And now it's going to be five on two as we press the attack. We should be able to finish them off in this roll, I think. Yep, there they go. Holy cow, almost every one hit. All right, so are they going to get any? Ah, uh, they did knock out a tank. All right, we'll take the loss to the tank. Nonetheless, two tanks left. The enemy loses five infantry. We lose one infantry, one tank. Only a slight advantage to us in terms of uh, IPCs. That combat phase, the Germans lost 21 industrial points. The uh, Russians lost 15, the British 31. So overall, 46 to 21. Americans didn't engage the Germans at all. Non-combatant phase, we need to land those aircraft. We'll land them in West Russia to dissuade an allied counterattack there. Meanwhile, we're going to move two infantry units north here to help the German armor there if the British or if the enemy does counterattack there. We're going to move these three infantry units here from Ukraine along with two artillery units. We're going to move this armored unit up here as well to Western Russia. This infantry will move to Ukraine because it can't move to. This artillery will move to Ukraine because it can't move to. These guys will move to Ukraine. Ukraine is going to be a superpower. Ukraine the superpower. All right, we'll leave these infantry all in place. Uh, these aircraft need to land. Ooh, I can land this bomber basically wherever. I'm going to land him in Germany. Land this fighter only on the uh, coast. Doesn't have the range, I guess, to land somewhere else. Move this infantry into Finland to get them closer. There's no enemy transports in the United Kingdom, so those are relatively safe. Non-combatants. Oh, we took Persia, too, because of the way our tanks moved. So they're going to take Egypt next turn. That's Actually, no, let's pull this guy back to Egypt. Let's do that. We'll pull him back to Egypt to keep Egypt safe because it's worth more IPCs. We'll let the Americans advance. And uh, I'm assuming the British won't attack Anglo there. Uh, if the British move units out of India toward Persia, then that's going to expose their forces in India to a Japanese attack from Burma. So that's good. I mean, the British, the Jap the Russians could certainly counterattack in multiple places. They could counterattack at Kazaa and have a big advantage. They could counterattack at Archangel potentially and have an advantage there. They could counterattack at Russia. They only have three artillery, though, so it, me it makes the number of locations that they would counterattack somewhat limited, I think. Um, with that being said, let's end that phase. Let's go ahead to the deployment phase. I forgot the British move next. All right, so we've got units we can deploy. We're going to deploy... 
the um, transports here off the coast of Italy. Both of them. We'll see if the enemy moves air units against them. I hope not. Can we deploy them anywhere else? Ooh, we can, we can deploy them in the Black Sea. We'll do that. Can they move out of the Black Sea, though? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, we'll move this fighter unit to the front line here in the Caucasus, as well as an infantry unit here. And then I think we can fit two artillery. No, we can't. We can only fit one artillery unit in there. We'll move our two tanks here to Poland. They can still... One, two... No, they can't. One, two... All right, so let's do this. Move these tanks to Karelia. We'll move this artillery here to Poland. Okay, so that's going to end the phase. So now it's the British turn. Germany gained three more territories, four more national production, and we're going to follow what the British do here. Okay. The British do anything? I'm confused. Did they just build two more destroyers and a cruiser and that's it? Is that all the British did? <laughs> oh. Okay. That was a fast turn. I think they're just going to try and use their navy to eventually destroy what's left of the German navy, I suppose. Meanwhile, the Japanese are back on their turn. We'll be continuing to try and wipe out the American navy, which they haven't really rebuilt anything in the Pacific. The Americans are completely avoiding the Pacific, which means that perhaps an invasion of the American West Coast will be in order eventually. Um... I think in the short term, we probably want to build some units to deal with the Soviets. I don't really know. I guess we'll build three Japanese tanks because we can deploy those to, to Europe. Meanwhile, we've already got quite a bit of units in Japan. Maybe we build a transport and then build another fighter. I think that'll end that phase. All right, now combat moves. So they'll have three fours and five twos. I don't know if we want to... risk attacking Burma yet. That perhaps feels a little premature. We're going to move one Japanese unit into Yakut because it's unopposed. Not two. We're going to leave these two here. But we'll move one there. Meanwhile, we're going to move a Japanese battleship and bomber and whatever this is, a destroyer here to deal with the remnants of the American Pacific Fleet. That should be sufficient. Um. Oh, goodness, I just slammed my hand into my microphone. Sorry about that, guys. Can these attack anything? Is it even worthwhile attacking the Americans in Alaska? I suppose we could. We'd be, we'd be destroying American units. To what purpose, I'm not sure. I'd love to, like, actually attack the American West Coast. Are, these islands aren't worth anything, though. That's the problem. So I think we'll... Discretion is the better part of valor. For the moment, we're not going to do anything there or in China, I think. Let's go for it, guys. Let's let's gamble. All out attack on India. The invasion of India is nigh. All right, we're going to bring in two... Amphibious units that are going to be landing 
in India. So we pulled them out of the Dutch East Indies, which apparently there's no enemy naval forces in the South Pacific to worry about. The only other American, na- the only other naval forces to worry about on this side of the globe are the Americans, which were busy wiping out. And then these infantry units here are going to go after India. So th- these guys are going to be the cannon fodder, the two attacking at one. Um, these guys, this artillery should hopefully help. Uh, the air and the armored units are really the heavy hitters. We're going to be going against five twos and three fours. The three fours are what really scares me. But we'll see. We'll see how this all plays out. Um, I wish I could use the Panama Canal rather than, like, sailing around the Cape. I don't think... I could use the Panama Canal because that Japanese Navy would sure be useful in wiping out the Americans. But if we can take India now and then place three tanks on the continent, it might allow us to really roll up the Russians in the east and finish them off. We'll see. Let's go ahead and end the phase and see how the combat goes. All right, so I think there's there's two battles that are actually going to be fought. We just auto-took the, uh, the province of Yakut. So this is, I'm assuming, where the Soviets will counterattack. Uh, meanwhile, why is there no battle here? I'm confused. Did we not reach the base? We'll have to see. This is only the only one showing is a battle. Amphibious assault in India. Defending anti-aircraft artillery gets to roll. Oh shit! I forgot they got to roll one for every aircraft. Thank God they missed. Or it looks like only up to three. All right, so... Oh, okay, so all of our infantry are going to attack at two. That should help. Whoa! Th four twos! That is a great start to this battle. And now we've got five threes. Let's see if we can knock these guys out. Oh, of course. Our threes shit the bed, but our twos roll like heroes. Okay, let's see what the defenders roll. They get five twos, they hit one. So that's fine. We'll take the hit on one of the amphibious infantry. And then we'll see what the, th the fours roll. Only one more hit there too, that's good. Good result. So the low rollers are the champions and the high rollers suck. In any event, we wiped out their infantry, so we're gonna press the attack. I don't think their any aircraft gets to fire again. So one more hit there, that's on the aircraft. We've got five more rolls here. Hopefully we can get two more on the aircraft. All right, we got three hits there. So that's a victory in India. It's just a question of, ah, uh, we took two more hits. All right, so we'll take the hit to the artillery and to the infantry. We have one arti or two artillery and, an, and a tank survive to take India. And the uh, fighter aircraft all survive. And so we wipe out British India. The British have fallen. India has fallen to us. And that's a huge hit for the, the British. 50 IPCs lost, only 13 Japanese lost in return. India is now Japanese. The Japanese have now linked up both in China and in Asia with the British. Uh, or China is Asia. But India and uh, China um, with, the, the, um, with the Germans. And that's a big deal. Um... We can now turn all of our effort to dealing with the Russians. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, we've just taken India. Seems like a good stopping point. The Axis armies are on a roll. The Russians are in trouble. The British are in trouble. The American Navy is in trouble. Things are going well for the Axis powers in this series, in this episode three of our look at Axis and Allies 1942 Online, a new digital adaptation by Beamdog. It is currently available on Steam. It is in early access, uh, and you can pick it up over there. With that being said, I hope you're enjoying the series. Please, as always, leave your thoughts below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.